Greetings transporters, it's Dr. Kelsey Ralph, and today we're going to talk about a common way of measuring traffic congestion. We measure congestion using what's known as level of service, or LOS. To be clear, we're trying to capture the sense of what it feels like as a driver experiencing traffic delay. The second important thing to know is that LOS assigns a letter grade to characterize the amount of delay. If you get an A, there's almost no delay. B, a little bit. C's a bit more. D and F, there's a lot of delay. We can measure LOS at intersections and highways. Let's start with intersections first. Here, we assign level of service based on how long a driver waits in a queue. If you spend a little bit of time, you get an LOS of A. But if you spend a lot of time, 80 seconds, uh, you're going to get an LOS of F. We tend to measure LOS during the busiest parts of the day. And it's pretty easy to imagine when and where drivers experience the most delay. Whenever lots of people want to get to the same place at roughly the same time. This occurs in downtowns and city centers, but also at universities, large medical facilities, concert halls or stadiums. Drivers in these locations tend to experience a lot of delay, and we indicate that by assigning an LOS grade of F. Let's shift gears to talking about LOS for highways. This is a two-step process. First, we're gonna calculate a volume to capacity ratio. That sounds complicated, it's not. It's just the number of cars on the roadway uh, divided by the capacity of the roadway. That's the number of cars the roadway is designed to handle. In step two, we assign a label or a letter grade for each of these ra ratios based on a formal standard, A to F. Let's take a look at what this looks like um, in some real world examples. So first, there are no cars on this highway. The volume to capacity is zero and they earn an LOS of A. Next, we add a few more cars but still a really, really low uh, ratio of cars to capacity, so still an A. In this next example, we're adding a couple more cars. I'm looking at an LOS of B or C. Here, things are getting a bit dicey, probably around a 0 0.8, um, probably an LOS of D or E. And here, things have really tipped over. We're at one or maybe even greater than one. This is an LOS of F. Nobody wants to drive here. So remember that LOS is about capturing delay for drivers. Let's take a look at the level of service and the speeds that drivers are traveling to see if that works out. As you can see, LOS is closely associated with speed, so it does a decent job of capturing delay. But notice that when we add in information about traffic flow, that's the number of cars that are actually getting through the lane each hour, LOS is not doing a great job of measuring flow. We talk about the relationship between density, speed, and flow in a different video, but it is worth a quick refresher here. As we add vehicles to the roadway, that's increasing density, speeds decline. Flow increases initially as we add more cars, but then it decreases as density gets too high and the road gets too crowded. Here is another way to visualize the relationship between vehicle density, speed, and LOS. We start on the left-hand side with very few cars on the roadway. We have high speeds and smooth flowing traffic. We have an LOS of A. But as we add more vehicles, the volume to capacity ratio increases. Speeds are stable for a while until LOS D or E, when speeds start to decline quite a bit. Adding even more cars to the roadway can bring speeds to a complete standstill. Then we have LOS F. Let's look at this one more way. What should earn an A grade if our goal was to maximize vehicle flow? LOS E maximizes flow, according to the table. Still, we might prefer LOS D, just avoid tipping over into LOS F conditions. In other words, LOS E is pretty unstable. 
We definitely don't want LOS A if our goal is to maximize flow. So to recap, we use LOS to measure the amount of delay drivers experience. LOS A is a little bit of delay. LOS F is a lot. Finally, LOS grades are not a good indication of vehicle flow. In later classes, we will learn about some of the shortcomings and unintended consequences of measuring congestion using LOS. For now, know that we use LOS to prioritize transportation projects and evaluate new developments.